the lone representative from South Korea here in Masters Tour Seoul, a South Korean representative. So naturally, the crowd is rallying behind him. It is true, and as sad as I am to see that Silas has fallen, Suni has had a very, very skillful, skillful performance throughout sure. the weekend, so I definitely respect that result so far. Last Filipino gone, there's still a UK player in, but you know what, Derek, I think we can all agree that we are just beating on NA. We are zero NA, or America's representatives at all, in top eight. A little bit of a downturn from their dominant performance at Vegas, of course, with uh, American players taking first and second at that particular event. But in this one, we're going to have to find out who will be advancing through uh, to the semi-finals, in addition uh, to RNG Lees, uh, who also got through in addition to Felky after taking his victory yeah. over Deadpool. RNG Lees with the most dominant performance throughout the entire weekend, undefeated so far in match yeah. score. And uh, we are going to see who's going to face him between Magoho and Suni. So Suni, with the combo priest, has been doing really well because of how many mages he's ran into, but now going to have to climb an uphill battle up against this warrior. Yeah, this is one of the uh, worst matches matchups for Priest. I think the worst matchup overall for Priest uh, during the tournament. The main reason why it is the highest win rate deck overall in Masters Tour Soul is the mage. It's just absolutely dominating the mage matchup. But up against the Warriors here, it is definitely going to be struggling. So, Suni down I would say, but certainly not out, especially with all the, the spirit and uh, applause that his, uh, the audience is giving him. At the very end of the first day, he took a victory against a control warrior with a very, very well played end game set where he set up just minions with a lot of health but not enough attack to fall into the BGH range. And suddenly, when he had that very last silence he needed in hand and the inner fire, he took a win from pretty much out of nowhere from our perspective. But I'm sure Sumi himself was setting that up several turns in advance. This is a very high level combo priest player, so if anyone can take down a warrior, it's him. That's absolutely right, and it's not just uh, his late game prowess that's impressed me. It's also his early game with the combo priest that I've been left very, very impressed by. Uh, up against Staz in particular, he was uh, up against the uh, the Reno Hunter that Staz was rocking and was just losing the early game, basically. He was down and out, looking to just be uh, in no position to pull things back. So he just goes all in, makes a 14-14 minion, almost loses if it was dealt with and somehow manages to get there. It's uh, bold plays, risky plays, but you have to be able to do that with this combo freeze deck. I do love the bread and butter Hearthstone. Make a big guy, make it hit face. Yes. If they don't have the answer, you'll win. Exactly. However, having the answer seems to be Warrior's speciality, especially Magaho's kind of weird hybrid build of the Bomb Warrior. This is not like a lot of the lists that we saw over the course of Grandmaster Season 1. Uh, there's a lot more removal slotted in there with the new Plague of Rats, destroying all damaged minions for 5 mana, recently added in in Saviors of Aldum, uh, as well as an Execute thrown in there as well. Yeah, tons of removal available from Magoho. So what Suni is looking for is a way to get that early game chip damage, or not even chip, when you have a minion like North Shore Cleric and double extra arms, that's chunks of damage, yeah. threes and fives, and getting that early damage in the beginning when the warrior doesn't have access to their turn for removal is very important, but you just see the audience that and the so cast funny. going, ah, no cleric. <laughs> <laughs> the audience, every time he draws cleric, they say, hey, and every time he doesn't, oh. And we have heavily been joking around a bit about Suni having cleric all the time, but you know what, Magoho with his one of Town Cryer and one of Eternium Rover, I think every game he's always had at least one of those. Yeah, that is a little bit unlikely as well, I think it's fair <laughs> to say, despite uh, that he is, you know, like you said, a lot of warriors going with three or even four one drops in the deck, but not all of Magoho is going with a slightly removal heavier build. Right. And already Suni faced with a decision of whether he wants to just play a temp uh, River Croc with the Neferset Ritualist to challenge the Town Cryer and get some type of minion presence going. Obviously, the downside of that is that if it stays in hand, when the injured body faster sticks, it has this huge upside of creating a 4-7 body. But how likely is it that a 4-3 on turn 3 sticks against a warrior that had a 1 drop? That's the thinking, right? Is that Nefset is obviously very likely to survive on this turn because it's going into turn 2 with a coin. Blade Master next turn is extremely likely, I would say, to be hit with uh, either Coin Restless Mummy in the worst case, but also Coin Wrench Caliber would also right. do the job for Magaho. I think if Suni's plan is to play the injured Blade Master next turn, it is Never very been. unlikely yeah. to work out. It would mean that the Town Cry would have had to have drawn the one in three Zilliacs, yeah. and that no other removal options are opted. But that is quite a draw. Still yep. dies to Restless Mummy, unfortunately, though. Which because, is a big deal. Yeah, the one attack is on board. Wow. 
And he's just throwing it out without even going for the circle of healing at all. And I think this is trying to go for the Psycho Pump top deck, which is obviously the dream. You revive the 4-7. Yeah, I guess seven. so, I guess so. Um, yeah, Suni just didn't have any better options, I guess. At some point, you got to get something going against Warrior because as uh, the longer the game goes on, the more it what favors now? the control deck. And I think this is something that see we see a lot from Suni, is he makes plays that look super weird. But that's because he's very, very good at realizing what is an actual realistic win condition. He won't just throw cards on the table and say, you know, I hope this works if they remove it, whatever. He re he's realizing now, like you said, he's looking for stuff like Psycho Pump uh, for what? Wild Pyro and Cleric to save for the Circle of Healing. He is realizing that saving cards in his hand and making low tempo plays right now is the way he could actually win the game. Mm -hmm. so, Nagoho can go ahead and coin out a Restless Mummy take a trade and have a 3-1 on board for his troubles. Small thing, but he places the correct one, which Suni knows has been drawn off the challenge prior. It is a small optimization yep. thing, but honestly, correct. it is a pet peeve that a lot of pro players rag on if you make those small problems like that. And well, Pyro double powered shield allows for a board clear here and some much needed cycle. But Suni is going to be more patient with it. Taking it nice and chill. What is the warrior realistically going to do on turn four? We're talking about either Wrench Caliber or Restless Mummy in the most likely scenario. And eh, I would say at that point, you're pretty happy. You can just go with right. the Pyromancer next turn and still clear up. And I think crucially, he's hoping to get the Cleric to go along with his hand because suddenly yep. the hand becomes insane when you get North Shore Cleric That's with right. the Circle of Healing. and Pyro. Cleric or Acolyte as well. So he's got True. a few good draws here. Four of them, in fact. So roughly a one and six to get something he really wants. And even if it's not one of those, a Psycho Pump would still be great here. That would be huge. That's true. So actually a lot of good draws available here to Suni, which is, again, why I like his patient play and setting up for these combos. Uh, it's called Combo Priest. After all, you've got to get them rolling. So going into turn five, it is a little bit of the same. What is the warrior realistically going to threaten? There yeah, is a bit of a bomb package from Magaho, but on turn five, the most threatening minion in terms of attack is a big game hunter, which is never happening. So at worst, Suni would be scared of, say, an Elric hitting the board, which is still not too much pressure. So I could realistically see him just chill again this turn. Is there any world in which we see the, the kind of the full all-in of uh, Blade Master Circle double powered shield to give him the highest chance of surviving? So this is somewhat using his resources, but saving the possibility of Cleric being really strong off mm -hmm. the top, and Acolyte, as you mentioned, so makes some sense here. And uh, second Restless Mummy will make quick work of this board, or the Super Collider plus some traits. Yeah, both actually look pretty reasonable. The Super Collider obviously sets up for making any board sticking for Suni very, very unlikely indeed. So, Super so I think I actually quite like Super onto the four seven. It's actually yeah. perfect, right? Because it goes down to four six, then yep. gets hit by the two three. So the remaining four attack will clean up the entire board. Very very nice indeed. And now this means for Suni, board control is pretty much out of the question unless we see a pretty spectacular few turns coming, which is what he's setting up for again. By playing to the draw of cleric or pirate, uh, sorry, cleric or acolyte, he's giving himself the chance to pull things back. Unfortunately, though, there is no board to take full advantage of a cleric, although at least two draws would be, you know, something that Suni needs to get happening here. Yeah. And if you're Magoho, you see the priest go hero power pass turn six. That tells you a lot, I think. It tells you there's no psycho pump. It tells you there is no powerful card draw combination. So I wonder if Magoho is fine also just passing the turn. Um, to maybe, in case of the pyro cleric circle type things, yeah. Give no, less draw possibility me. to Suni. That might be thinking a little bit too fancy. Oh! That is the absolute dream draw for Suni. This is what he's been setting up for this entire time, and he is rewarded. You can go for the Power Word Shield onto, I think it should hit the Pyromancer, I just agree. because First it has time. less health. <laughs> second one he can think about where he wants to put it and a uh, circle of healing just for one draw also seems like it could happen at some point yes he could even uh, start with silence to um, or go for it the next turn silence he could still use to effectively clear up the mind right however the silence is a very relevant tool because that's Suni's 
uh, you know, efficient way of getting through taunts. But we know from Magoho's unique deck list that he does not run the uh, Omega Dillo 2 Morden yeah. package, so it would have to come off something like an assembly or delivery drone. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not even running the Frightened Flunky, which honestly yeah. seems pretty wild at this point. Yeah, I agree. Flunky, good card. Suni going all in on the card draws here. He's given himself five cards minimum. Yeah. And it's just going to be carrying on now. He says to Mago, do you want to trade in here? That's going to give you two more cards at least. Could have gone for one more cycle, but I don't mind holding on to this circle of healing because he's got stuff to do on the next turn. Amet yeah. and Pyro. Maybe that's oh. not the greatest use of it. Amet, Divine Spirit, Pyro for a 14 health wild Pyromancer. <laughs> And the Amet itself. Oh. 14 health with low amounts of attack. Super Collider doesn't seem too great in that situation, but Magoho does have this Plague of Wrath, the one of in hand. True. So it's an emergency switch should something go terribly wrong. And there is some overdraw potential right here with the Dynomatic, but I do think that's counterintuitive to Magoho's game plan because he just saw Suni want more cards. You and Kibler did enjoy the overdraw memes in your cast yes, there. He did just say every time Twitch chat sees the possibility, <laughs> they will ask for it. I know, it's, it's proof that Brian secretly hates everyone in Twitch chat. But they'll still all love him. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to turn them against me because I've already had someone climb up the side of the stage, get my attention, wave at me with an autograph book, and then tell me to get Brian's attention <laughs> so that he can sign it. So I'm a little bit bitter. Uh, that is peak non-Brian caster culture. Yes, you know? <laughs> exactly. All I am is a I Brian dispenser. Dark that hits the board, but no Psycho Pump to go along with this. I think Magoho, with the Grimace, was expecting to see a Psycho Pump here. Um, mm -hmm. So he can go for the Divine Spirit, and I do like getting that value off of it. He can also choose to play the Tolvir instead of the Pyro here, which, one, puts a ton in the way to try and protect the Amet a little bit more, and yeah. two, saves the Pyro should Eric or Second Acolyte come off the top. I'm not sure if I do like using the Divine Spirit here, because this is not like the Combo Priest of old, where you had uh, Shadow Visions to find yourself more copies of Divine Spirits. You've only got two in the deck, so if these are dealt with through, of course, uh, Plague of Rats, something like that, your win condition becomes pretty difficult to achieve, actually. It is true. Uh, on the counterpoint, though, we've seen Suni do a lot of this over the weekend against Control Warrior, which is just set up low attack, high health, health minions, constantly threaten the inner fire, and just point. keep them at a health total, which is awkward for the warrior to deal with. Awkward on paper, but Magoho has this Plague of Wrath. He is also running the run of Exit in case he needed it, but um, in cases of, like, say, turn 10 when Omega Devastator is active, leaving something at 14 health is surprisingly annoying. Oh, Sunni and Cleric, name a more iconic duo. I cannot, Derek. It just does not exist. Batman and Robin, nope. Peanut butter and jelly, nope. Sunni and Cleric, that is the most iconic duo. Oh, how about Psycho Pomp and the Injured Blade Master? That's, that'll take a, a close second. Mm -hmm. But that only has, I don't know how many minions have died, but quite a lot. I mean, there's a lot of good outcomes though, right? If he gets the injured Tolvir, he can get Amet. Yeah. Um, even an Acolyte of Pain is good. Yeah. The only real low roll would be the Nefeset Ritualist. I mean, I'm not saying that the Psycho Pump was bad. I'm just saying yes. that yes. it and the injured Blade Master is not nearly as iconic as Sunni and Cleric. You're not incorrect. Gia and being annoyingly right. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's a more iconic duo. I will take that. <laughs> Okay, so what's the best way to set up a Dynomatic here with the Super Collider on board? He can just, you know, clunk away at the Pyro, which yep. kills the Neferset. Dynomatic will then clean up the Cleric. Yeah, that and looks good to me. Magoho has a lot of resources here. He's got Shield Slam for emergencies. Not a lot of um, armor, but he has BGH in case soon he goes in and is forced into that all-in game plan, which he saw him go for against Daz. He's got Spellbreaker. Yeah. Really strong one as well. You could actually even just swing into the Neferset, and that's still up 100% chance to clear with Dynamatic. Um, that is my thing, go for. Yeah, I would have saved one. Uh, that was just wrong. It was. Yeah. He missed three to face and put three damage into the Dynamatic. Yeah. Because the Dynamatic obviously uh, is a mech itself, and therefore cannot be targeted by Dynamatic. We have seen some sloppiness from yes, Magoho throughout we have. the day. I, I would definitely say that he has made the most technical mistakes. 
and all of them involving Super Collider, I would say. So, he's gonna need to clean it up if he wants to go against a player of Sunni's caliber. I fully agree, because look, I mean, if this was a, a value trading Dynamatic, it would be an entirely different story mm -hmm. as to how he could clear up this board and keep board control uh, going. Especially as Sunni. Running out of stuff. Only four cards left in the deck. Both Psycho Pomps coming down now. Yeah. This is probably the last big board he can make. And there is the Spellbreaker to get rid of this injured There's Tall so Beard. Much yeah, like, Warpath is amazing. Honestly, Warpath to deliberately draw cards is not that bad anymore. It isn't. But you may given still that not Suni, go. Yeah, Suni won't overdraw anything. So or just to get him to fatigue. Sure. Maybe. But yes, I agree. You're probably winning anyway, so you don't yeah. need to win quicker. Exactly. Because it opens you up to some potential receivers. But still, I'm gonna, you know, be a bit hard on Magoho for this. If the Dynomatic had full health, it would survive a warpath and yeah. make this even better for him. Oh, oh, yeah, like I said, worlds apart in terms of how this situation would have been. Your worked. magic shall not save you. Into Acolyte can happen. Oh, I guess he is going wow. for the deliberate overdrive. Okay. I'm not a fan. I'll be completely honest. This kills his own Spellbreaker, assuming he's going for the full suite of Warpaths. And. I think the thing is, this, this will usually win him the game anyway. The vast majority of the will, but this gives Suni all his resources right now yes. to make a push. Yes. And then a higher probability of following up with another push. Yeah, I and, agree. And the most important thing, I think, is that Magoho gave up his own minions when he could have had a very solid board state just leaving up, say, the reborn of the Acolyte or... Um, yeah, I, th I think if Magoho had a handful of bomb cards, it would make a little bit more sense to maybe try and push for lethal on the following turn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in this instance, I... Uh, I agree. I think, you know, like we said, he wins in four turns or he wins in two turns, right? Like, it just lowers his percentages a little bit, I think. Given that Suni has very few threats left, honestly, just the Tolvir is the only thing with enough health that could possibly scare Magoho. I can see where he's coming from, but I really think that was actively bad, yep. what Magoho did. And I think we can see a little bit from his facial expression that he is... Uh, second guessing what he has gone for. So it's up to Suni now to piece together these last 10 cards. What is the way I can win here? It definitely centers around the injured 12 year sticking. Right. He needs to uh, he needs to figure out how do I punish this? What's my way to get an advantage from my opponent's slip up with all these cards I now have? And it comes in the form of going all in on the board, praying there's no brawl. Unfortunately. Being sad when there is. There is a brawl. <laughs> That's a bomb in the deck as well. Yep. And just even without the brawl, Suni used one Divine Spirit, and I'm not saying it was wrong of him to do so, but that means his maximum damage output for one turn is severely limited. Because you could heal the Tolvir, put it to six, and have a double extra arms Divine Spirit. So yeah. that doesn't even all happen in one turn along with the inner fire. Right. So it was still just 20, and that would mean it would have to stick on the board for two turns to get any damage done and it would just tie to big game hunter so it was a complete lockout after that brawl i think so one final push here for suni going with the the biggest minion he can possibly make which okay it does not have the plus attack on it so it doesn't die to big game hunter oh no he is going for it so it does die to big game hunter. yeah that's good and suni didn't <laughs> have a choice here so magoho is going to take the victory but honestly that was extremely shaky for him yeah, I agree. Uh, I think on the other side for Suni, the, like, the one thing I was really looking at was again whether to use the Divine Spirit on the Amet when he did, because I think 9 health and 14 health, they're o they're likely still going to be dying to either Execute or Plague of Wrath either way, and I think Divine Spirit might have been the slightly more valuable card uh, later on in the game, uh, but I think even if he had gone for that, the likely outcome is still he just runs out of threat. It's true. You make a very good point because that did happen, I think, around turn 8 when Omega Devastator was not a possibility sure. yet. So that above 10 health cut off was not nearly as relevant and probably makes me question whether the Divine Spirit was really necessitated there. In any case, uh, Suni now gets to move to my favorite secondary deck in all <laughs> of Hearthstone Masters Tour Soul. Octasari, Deadbringer Seance. But before we go to that, it is going to be a short break, guys, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. We are in the middle of Magoho versus Suni for a decider match in Group A. Magoho did take that first game there, but now Suni with the combo piece has this ability to move to the spicy secondary deck, including Dead Ringer, Coffin Crasher, Octasari, Chef Nomi, and Seance. My name is Gia, and still with me for the broadcast is Derek Brown. Hello. How do you think this series has been shaping up so far? It's been going about as expected, friendo, uh, <laughs> so far as I'm concerned. The Priest pretty much coming up short against all the removal that the Warrior can throw down. Uh, especially given, again, this is Magaho's kind of hybrid, we've been calling it, between Control and Bomb Warrior. Uh, I think that the, uh, the spicy sideboard, as we've been calling it, spicier than a bowl of dumpling soup. <laughs> uh, is still going to be struggling against the Warrior because there's obviously the potential to go for the perfect Coffin Crasher, pull out the Octasari, draw your whole deck, and Chef Nomi. It's I think what's more likely to happen, though, is that the removal still manages to line up well enough for the Warrior, or those perfect combo cards don't work together. Right. However, I hope Ooh. that we get to see it. It is in the hand, which is um, not necessarily a bad thing because the Dead yes. Ringer can pull Coffin Crasher, which then pulls out the Octosari. That's the whole point of this package. I do want to ask, though, is this spicier than the Volcano Dumpling, which is something that I went to dinner with uh, Sayan and Muzzy at yeah. one point, and then on the menu, there's an option for a Volcano something dish. We didn't quite know what it was, but it had two options. The basic, which had four chili pepper signs, right. and then the extreme option, Hello. which, hey, everyone, had at least eight chili peppers, and then an X question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> we were not brave enough to not try that. Not legal to be consumed by <laughs> humans. Um, I'd say this is still spicier. It's, it's Octasari and Coffin Crush. Sure. I mean, come on. You know, who can argue with that? Amigo. <laughs> yes, the synonyms for friends continue, Star. Until you run out of them. They do, mon ami. So, Suni here with an option to develop his Injured Blade Master and then go for a really powerful Circle of Healing. And honestly, this is the way to go. We are before, I keep saying it's yep. turn four when the Warrior gets their good removal online. And even a Restless Mummy here, even though it could deal with the 12 year, still leaves up the Injured Blade Master. I fully agree. This is so much more what we're looking for here as uh, Suni. I, I think he approached it correctly last time where he didn't go for this tempo route because his hand didn't complement it well enough. It was more going for a draw plan. Uh, but this instance, when the cards have shown themselves as a tempo plan, he's absolutely doing the right thing. I mean, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see like a, a, a quote unquote tempo seance just to get another minion in play, keep up the damage. You know, I could see that happening, but I'm also looking at this extra arms that here. That comes first. Yeah, yes. given that both these minions will in all likelihood survive this turn, that means a pair of arms can go on each of these and they will fly under the radar of BGH and clock away at tons of damage from Agoho, a total of 10 next turn. Wow. Although I, I assume that one of them would take a trade onto the Eternium Rover just because that's a card that could represent armor gain or magnetic punishes in the future. Magnetic with Zilliax or Snip Snap is uh, yeah. definitely the big one there. So Nagoho is going to go Whoa. for a Shield Slam here. It's a good spot actually. The Shield Slam, while it is a valuable resource in the long run, the way that the game is panning out makes it so that Magoho might not have a window to gain enough armor to use yeah. it well. So he is just going to take out a two drop with it, which is pretty sad, but I think necessary. The unfortunate thing for Suni here somewhat is I don't think he can have any read on uh, Spellbreaker, that there isn't a Spellbreaker in hand, because I don't think it would have come down on that turn. It didn't really do much to actually help the board position. So he's going to be a little bit afraid to go uh, all in with like double extra arms, queen in a fire. Uh, for the maximum amount of damage. It also is just the BGH, I think. Yeah. Uh, yes, true. Another good point. Another good point. And we were just talking about how. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Magoho looks stressed at that draw, but maybe it's like, you know how you sometimes feel a little bit dirty with your top decks and heart? So it's more of that expression. Yeah. Magoho saying, oh, we oui, we. Oui. <laughs> we love to see that. That is a one of in the deck. Shield Slam also a one of. <laughs> yes. But it's all right. We have the <laughs> Sorry, Darok. We're still in this. But and you know, to be fair to Magoho, it's not like that was the only good draw in his deck. True, like, true, true. Uh, the Plague of Wrath, although a little bit of overkill would have still gotten the job done. Zilliax could have delayed. Uh, you know, there was a few good answers. Spellbreakers also. Exactly. Decent. 
And it does mean that Suni is pushed into the position of turn five pass. The nightmare. We're, I think he's going to top that coffin factor here. You know, I'm feeling it. Oh, that's one of the spicy inclusions. I was close. But not going to be active for a very long time. So the idea with the inclusion <laughs> of these five <laughs> distinct cards. Chef Nomi, Octasari, Coffin Crasher is to just accelerate your draw with Octasari, which activates Nomi quicker. Then you can stay on the Nomi and create two board states which require brawl. And I mean, I guess I was going to say that for Suni, he Ooh. is kind of sad about burning <gasps> cards. It's not even necessarily that bad. Hey, I was one turn off this call, hmm. Derek. Hmm. So, Mac, <laughs> I'd say the biggest problem for Suni at the moment is more so than the. Uh, not being able to draw enough cards to get through to Nomi. It's it's Dr. Boom, right? It's better yeah. that he's just dying to the Blastmaster Boom right uh -huh. now. And there's Dr. Boom Mad Genius to follow up as well. So he's just dumping cards from his hand. Right, to not overdraw. <laughs> Silencing a Boom Bot. Yeah. He kind of does have to go for something in this realm. I'm not sure if tossing those cards specifically was the best way to go about it, but he really does have to go for Octasari pulling him out of this situation because yep. he is just, you know, going to take 11 this turn if Mago doesn't trade. And he um, can technically deal with the Octasari without trading, but he what should, oh, sorry, the Coffin Crasher, but he should know it's pulling Octasari because of how fast soon he played it, I would yep. say. So I don't hate um, going for perhaps Dr. Boo, but then Precision. that is just leaving up a 7 health minion, so putting a ton in the way I think is a very smart way to go about it. I like this a lot because this is obviously applying two turn lethal very, yeah. very easily indeed. And it's also saying you have to kill off the Coffin Crasher, which has 7 health, and the Octasari, which has 8 health, and then that doesn't even win you the game. It just draws your deck. Also, he just used the Silence, yeah. and the other copy of Silence is removed in favor of the Death Rattle package, so Suni doesn't really have a great way around this taunt. The spirit of the crowd seems to be falling as Suni, their lone South Korean representative left in the tournament, is looking in mighty rough shape. Is that the 10th spirit card they released in Rastakhan's Rumble? Spirit of the Shark, Spirit of the Frog, Spirit oh. of the Crowd! Yeah. Spirit of the Soul. <laughs> that sounds a little redundant, but Soul of the City, not the um, Yes, obviously. Right. Gotcha. So, Suni doing the best he can to find something in the deck. Wild Pyro with just inner trying fires. to survive. <laughs> yeah. Fire. Okay. And this just doesn't really do it. Soaking up a whole bunch of bombs. I guess none go face is alive. They could all snipe the Coffin Crasher and pull out the Octasari, but that didn't quite happen. So unfortunately, that is just going to end Suni's tournament run here at HTT Soul, the last... Um, sorry, not HTT Soul. Masters, Masters Tour. Tour Soul. And that means the last Korean player in top eight has fallen. So quite a solid but respectful round of applause from the crowd because Nagoho, another warrior, is going to be still in it. Dead draw also still alive on the other side of the bracket, so could still be seeing the dominance of Warrior. We could indeed, and this is one of the main reasons why you're bringing it. Main reason, I would say, beating up on the rogues, the aggro rogues, some of the other aggro decks like Shaman knocking about. But Priest is just some great collateral damage that you're taking down with these builds of Warrior. And Magaho, honestly, not playing the best series of Hearthstone I think I've seen, could definitely have tightened things up. And he will have to going forward. He's not going to get these easy matchups against uh, the Rogue and the Priest now that the only Rogue and Priest in top eight have been eliminated from the tournament. He's instead going to be having to take on mages, warrior mirrors, things like that, which can get a lot tougher. Uh, so for Magaho, tightening things up with his play, and I think he's got a winner on his hands. And you did bring up a very good point that with the soul Rogue and soul uh, Priest now eliminated, it is now just a three-class tournament represented among the players who are remaining. Uh, we are going to see who will be the winner of the next decider match, but RNG List is still chilling at the top there, undefeated with that Reno Hunter. So he looks very well positioned to take down both mages and warriors because the Hunter has a proper, like, what, sub, uh, sorry, yep. over 50% win rate against both those matchups. So we are just going to go to a break and soon bring you the next decider match. Don't go anywhere, guys.